I feel like we should discuss a little bit more as clinicians who are going to be making decisions about which one of these multiple choices of biologics that we want to pursue as being the best way to go for a particular patient. I wanted to hear actually from each one of you what your, your uh, thoughts are about 23s, particularly IL-23s, the things that are similar and then all, and then any nuances or things that you think are different, things, any patient type that you would avoid or patient type that you, you like to go towards. Mm -hmm. Margaret? So um, I love the 23s. Um, I have uh, limited access with the, the Tildra. Um, and I love using for patients who, um, you know, have good, moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, um, and they don't want the dosing, they want the convenience. So um, both the Rizzi and the Gulsi are, are great. I ju they just have to be prepared and be patient. So I think that's really, really good. And that's the patient, or maybe they don't have the, the funding to do some of the serial laboratories that I do with the, the, um, the other patients. Um, and I will go to these, especially if I have a patient that I'm concerned with, you know, any comorbidity like the, um, uh, like, I, inflammatory bowel disease, um, malignancies, um, or um, things like the family history of MS. There's no reason to go there if I have this. And I know I feel confident in um, a really high clearance and pretty rapidly, just a little bit of a slow onset. Um, the, where I see the difference is psoriatic arthritis or the potential for psoriatic arthritis. We don't have the data published yet, really, that, I'm, that I feel good about that. So if I feel a patient either highly suspect that they do, whether the rheumatologist um, has talked to them and they've been diagnosed or I suspect it, um, then I usually will go to an IL-17 um, as long as they don't have that history of inflammatory bowel disease, understanding that I'm gonna get a rapid clearance, um, they're gonna be happy with that quick clearance, and I, I feel good about being able to maintain it. But I always let all of my patients know, you know, that this is a chronic disease. You're likely gonna be on more than one biologic in your lifetime. And I like these because we've had a patients who've been on, you know, acetret and methotrexate and TNFs. And these are hopes for patients who have had a lifetime of this and not been able to clear. Right. Yeah, I think I would uh, echo the one phrase about uh, psoriatic arthritis because right now, um, out of the all of the 23s, mm -hmm. while they're, uh, they've extended the dosing schedule, which is convenient for patients and very nice, and they have the nuances in office, out of office, like we've already mentioned, none of them have uh, FDA indication for treatment of psoriatic arthritis. And so I'm not saying it's not coming. In fact, there was some phase two data presented on one of the 23s last summer in June in Europe at the, at the room conference that showed very nice ACR scores. So I think that 23s are gonna catch up, I'm gonna do it. It's just that they've only been out since 17, 2017. So we just kind of have to do that. So if a patient comes in and psoriasis is a significant contributor or a thought, I'm not gonna put them on 23 until that data is, is, is solidified. Uh, I am gonna put them on a 17, even though the National Psoriasis Foundation is recommending first-line treatment be TNFs. I have a lot of folks on TNFs that have psoriasis. I'm just seeing really good, particularly with, uh, with secukinumab, you know, because now we've got several of the 17s that have got data that shows that it halts the progression of, of joint de deterioration, sorry, about the, the joints falling apart. And so I think that that's great. And we're even seeing our rheumatology colleagues saying that they're using 17s with folks that have psoriatic arthritis. So we've got two good options if they've got a psoriatic component. We've got our TNFs, which are there, and we know that work and the help, and you've got 17s. Now, again, if it's irritable bowel problems, then 17s is not the choice. It's going to go on the TNF. You mean if, if, inflammatory, inflammatory, bowel. Uh, inflam <laughs> inflammatory bowel? Because we have, yeah. we have drugs that are already yes. approved to do both yes. that will work on right. with inflammatory bowel disease right. and right. psoriatic arthritis right. or right. and right. psoriatic skin. And we would pick a TNF then. Right. If you've had that right. history and there's or even, family history, that's right. right. And there's even or potentially going to be, be some data where the IL 23s are going to be potentially used for inflammatory bowel as well. So we just got to wait and see what's going to happen with those. Mm -hmm. But patient, special patient populations is important because joints you have to be considered or risk of joints, and you have to look at these these other comorbidities like we've already mentioned: cardiovascular, metabolic syndrome, 
cancer risks. And so because right now, if there's a, a particularly a large risk of lymphoma or family history of it, you're not going to put them on TNF because that black box warning is there, you know, is, is there already. So, you know, so you have to think about those things and ask those questions. We need, need to know a good family history and a good personal history so we know which class to put them on.